Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 147. <clears throat> Psalm 147. Psalm 147. From the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant. And praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. Future prophecy right there. He healeth the broken in heart. And bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord. And of great power, his understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Who covereth the heaven with clouds who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth the beast his food, and the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh Peace, thy borders, and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. <laughs> he scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth the wind to blow and the waters to flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. <clears throat> Praise ye the Lord. You know, there are many people out there who are depressed, who are sad, who are scared, who feel like they have no hope. Those of two of the church of the living God Many are suffering. Many are cleaving on to despair. Many think that the only way to provide is to compromise. Many are taking matters into their own hands. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. Turn to Job. 
Turn to Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. I'll get there. Job chapter 13. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 16. Now you got to remember about Job that God allowed Satan to afflict Job. And Job was given a testimony from the Lord that Job was one that feared God and eschewed evil and that he was upright. And that is the testimony of the Lord of Job. But God allowed Job to go through this stuff to let Satan afflict him. It even says in the book of Job that you had me afflict him without a cause. I'm just paraphrasing it. Job chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 16. And also, too, about Job 13, uh, Job is rebuking his three friends who came and sat with him in his grief. And for seven days, they didn't say a word to him because they saw that his grief was very great. Incidentally, uh, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God, when a brother or a sister comes to you mournfully in great sorrow, sometimes what you ought to do is just keep your mouth shut and let that said brother or sister use you as the ear to hear, if you know what I mean. Because it's when we start opening our mouth thinking that we're going to do all this great stuff for them that sometimes we can make it worse. As did Job's three friends. <laughs> Job 13, verses 1 on verse 16. <clears throat> Lo, mine eye hath seen all this. Mine ear hath heard and understood, understood it. <clears throat> what ye know, the same do I know also. I am not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. You know, sometimes, brethren, when someone comes to you really hurting, in great despair, depressed, and you think you're going to encourage them, sometimes you can turn out to be physicians of no value. See, that's why it is imperative that you wait on the Lord and that the Lord guide you. Especially when it comes to speaking unto brethren and sisters who are going through things. You wait on the Lord and you act upon his moving, not your own. Because what? What we want to comfort these uh, our brethren, right? When they come to us sorrowful, sometimes you just got to keep your mouth shut and wait for the Lord. Always have the scriptures, and you let the Lord through His Word do the speaking through you. <clears throat> Verse 5, Oh, that ye would altogether hold your peace, and it should be your wisdom. Hear now my reasoning, and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will ye speak wickedly for God and talk deceitfully for him, as if God needs us? Will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? Or you don't think uh, God can't defend himself? <laughs> <laughs> weight of the world on your shoulders you know is it good that he should search you out 
or as one man mocketh another, do ye so mock him? He will surely reprove you if ye do secretly accept persons. Shall not his excellency make you afraid? His excellency make you afraid? And his dread fall upon you? Your remembrances are like unto ashes, your bodies to bodies of clay. Hold your peace. Let me alone that I may speak, and let come on me what will. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth, and put my life in my hand, in mine hand? Excuse me. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. <clears throat> Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. And remember, Job was one that feared God, who was upright, and who eschewed evil. From the mouth of the Lord himself, said that of Job. He was righteous and upright. So when he says, but I will maintain mine own ways before him, it's not that, okay, yeah, the Lord is chastening me or correcting me. I'm just going to go on living the way I was living without examining myself according to the scriptures. That's not what it means. That's why self-examination, especially in these days, beloved, beloved brethren, is so important for you, for us, for me, of the Church of the Living God, that we examine ourselves according to the Scriptures. Because there are some of you out there who have things happening unto you that are not of your own fault. Look outside your door. Look outside your window. Okay? There are others of you who are suffering the consequences of your actions. And you know it. And some of you are being stiff-necked, refusing to let these things go. Again, that's why self-examination is so important. So important. Because if judgment begins at the house of God, and we are, the, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God, you're not your own. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Now, no chastening for the moment seemeth good, right? But afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Maybe you're going through something for the Lord to teach you something. Hmm? Go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 11 under verse 22. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, the fear of the Lord. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And by it, there's profit to them that see the sun. Wisdom is a defense. And money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Fear of the Lord. And what did we read in Psalm 147? Go back there. Hold your place there. <clears throat> Psalm 147, verses 10 and 11. He delighteth not in the strength of a horse, 
He taketh not pleasure in the length in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Picking up at verse 13. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful. Praise ye the Lord. But in the day of adversity, consider. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Am I in sin? Lord, am I being chastened? And during that time, and during that, remember this. God also hath set the one over against the other. Okay? God hath also set the one over against the other. Okay? To the end that man should find nothing after him. That man shall find nothing after him. Brethren, we're not taking anything with us. When you die, you're buried, and the Spirit returns unto God who gave it. And if you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, and converted, you're going to be ever with the Lord. And if you are not, fire awaits you. But there again, look at that verse. To the end that man should find nothing after him. Our sufficiency is of the Lord. If the Lord don't want you to have something, whatever it is for you, Good luck trying to achieve it. And if there is something that the Lord will have you to have. Good luck trying to reject it. Brethren, sisters, you have to remember. God will purposely, at times, lay things upon you within your life within your heart, so heavy for you, so impossible, that your only hope is to have faith and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will provide for you and do for you as he hath done for his own body, the church. God will sometimes put you in a place and strip everything away from you. Not just this stuff, but your peace. Who teacheth like him? Have any of you been more dependent on what you get from reward of your labor rather than Pure trust on our Lord Jesus Christ to provide everything for you. This is a time, yes, that many are afraid. It is, but hold your place here in Ecclesiastes. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Okay, this we have to remember. This we have to remember, brethren. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do you have 110% trust and faith on our Lord Jesus Christ? Who will provide for you according to your need. Hmm? Let's continue in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 15. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. 
There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Now, one would say this is talking about a balance, right? You have to have a balance with it. No, it's either or. It's either or. You're either on the Lord's side or you're of the world. Which one is it? There is no middle ground. There is no option C. Where do you stand? Where do you truly stand? Verse 18, it is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Yea, also from this with, withdraw not thine hand. For he that feareth God, he that feareth God, shall come forth of them all. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Sinless perfection is impossible. The only time that is going to be achieved is when you are dead and ever with the Lord. There will be no sin for those of us of the church of the living God. Either when we are resurrected or that we die and go to be with the Lord. Okay? But we all sin. So again, why you need to examine yourself. And truly adhere to the scriptures by faith and practice. Because guess what, friends? Do it God's way, according to the scriptures. He will reward you. Let's continue. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken. Lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. Hmm. It seems too that a lot of people nowadays are very thin skinned. You know, because when sandpaper, <laughs> and you're rubbing sandpaper on yourself. Sooner or later, that's going to run, uh, rub itself raw and very thin, right? Too many, far too many are thin-skinned today. Hmm. Go to Psalm 37. Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. We're going to touch on this a little bit deep, more deeply here as we continue. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. 
Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. Get a load of that. For he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword. They have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. Hey, Look at that verse, verse 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. Oh, excuse me, I skipped one. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Verse 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth, and payeth not again, but the righteous sheweth mercy, and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are, are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Though he fall. Though he fall. He shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Hold your place here. Hold your place here and go to John chapter 10. Hold your place. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 24 under verse 30. Familiar verses. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. One God. Comprising of spirit, soul, and body. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Go back to Psalm 37. Look at verse 24 again. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Verse 25. Here's a turning point in this psalm. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth. His seed is blessed. His seed is blessed. That seed that is in you is the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, you're saved, you are part of his bones and of his flesh. You are part of his body. He cannot deny himself. Verse 27, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Right there, the Lord loveth judgment. Again, are you judging yourself? According to the scriptures. Verse 29. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. And his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Oh boy, isn't that the truth? You're being watched, brother, sister, and the enemies of our Lord, which are your enemies, are, have you under a magnifying glass, just looking for any opportunity to destroy you. How you walk in. You walk according to the scriptures. Things will go better for you. If you truly adhere to the book. The scriptures by faith and practice. This is not just guidelines. Hardly. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. Verse 33. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, Thou shalt see it. Look at this verse again. Wait on the Lord. That doesn't mean sit there and do nothing. Wait on him. Serve him. Serve the Lord. And keep his way. According unto the Pauline epistles doctrinally. But remember, the entirety of scripture is for us. It's not all written to us, but it is for us, for instruction in righteousness, for reproof, correction, doctrine. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. <laughs> Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. 
Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man shall be peace. For us today, the perfect man. Is your heart perfect with the Lord? Hmm? Is your heart perfect with the Lord? How do you know? Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help him and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Say you trust on the Lord. Seriously, do you really trust on him? Do you think the Lord in you saying to trust on him will have you to compromise the standards of scripture in order to get by? Hmm? Go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4. On to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Go to First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Make your requests known unto God. John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence. We that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Go back to Psalm 37 now. Psalm 37 again. Okay? Psalm 37, verses 3, on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. 
Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Delight thyself in the Lord. How do you delight yourself in the Lord? How do you know what is according to his will? Number one, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Number two, his will for you is written for you in the scriptures. Especially today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. God will have all men to repent and to get saved with God's will for you. It's here in the scriptures, within the Pauline epistles, which is for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Okay? If you love the Lord and fear the Lord, he withholdeth no good thing from them who fear him and hope in him. And the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And we are to seek those things that are above, not the things that are down here on the earth. You're praying for something. And maybe it isn't coming to pass. Are you waiting on the Lord? Or are you praying for something that is not his will for you? How do you know? Search the scriptures and examine yourself, see. Go to Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Psalm 84. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out, for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. Who passing the, through the valley of Baca, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Silah. Behold, O God, our shield. And look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Good place here. Go back to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of, the, of wickedness. Excuse me, in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a son, S-U-N and shield, 
the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. How do we walk uprightly today in this dispensation? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. And of course, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Very easy when things are going well for you to praise the Lord. There again, do you thank him for adversity? Because see, what can happen is when things start going well for you, what do you do? You, you start to lose a little focus, don't you? Every single one of us at the Church of the Living God is 100% dependent on our Lord's mercies. And he will provide for you. He will provide for his own. And many, and the love of many will wax cold and are waxing cold today. But have you forgotten that you are accepted in the beloved? Philippians 4, verses 4 and on to verse 7 again. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Brethren, our time is coming to an end. And things are going to get increasingly worse for us. We know this. Keep your eyes upon Jesus and keep your ears open. For these light afflictions are but for a moment. And they fall short in comparison with the glory that you and I as the church of the living God are going to receive when we get to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. It's very easy to get discouraged. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verses 9, on to verse 20. The children of Ephraim. Ephraim means, by the way, fruitful. 
The name Ephraim is likened unto being fruitful. Okay? The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had shewed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zohar. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the waters to stand as an heap. Look at verse 12. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt. Egypt is likened unto a type of the world for us today. In the field of Zoan, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as in heap. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud and all the night with the light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock. Out of his belly shall flow living water. Christ is the rock who was first smitten and the waters gushed out. And remember Moses done messed up when the Lord said, speak unto the rock because the rock was smitten once and the waters came out. But Moses lost his cool and boom, boom, hit the rock twice, remember? When he was supposed to speak unto the rock. Verse 16 again. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused the waters to run down like rivers. From verse 13 on to verse 16. You notice how I was emphasizing the he. Okay? The he. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Have you forgotten what he has done for you? Or are you taking it for granted? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. There you go. Are you taking it for granted? Like the children of Ephraim. Ephraim is fruitful. Fruitfulness. Verse 17. And they sin yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust, their greed. Not their need. The Lord had supplied the need. But they wanted something for their greed. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock. That the waters gushed out, and stream and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Yes, he can. And yes, he will. A very dangerous thing to be in a place like this, brethren. Do you truly, truly trust on the Lord? Do you truly trust on the Lord? To do what he has called you on to. going to be it for this video. Just a short little video about things we got to do today.
the Lord, the Lord will provide for you as you need. The Lord will provide for us as we need. But you got to remember, brethren, you got to put legs in your prayers. You can't just sit there idle, waiting for it to fall from the sky for you. Because remember, he said unto the children of Israel, there's the promised land. Go get it. I'm going to be with you. Put legs in them prayers. Trust on him completely. His brethren, with what's coming, with what is coming upon us, brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and his provision for us is all that we have. And unto that I say, Praise the Lord. May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Thank you so much for watching, if you do.